Mr. Kelly told you in opening statement that he was going to prove that Lorillard, I wrote it down, designed its cigarettes to addict. They didn't do any of that in this trial. They talked about nicotine levels, but they never tried to prove to you how much nicotine was in the Kent cigarettes. They never tried to prove how much nicotine should have been in the Kent cigarettes. And they never proved that Mr. Maine was even addicted to Kent cigarettes at all. They talked about inhalability and opening, and then you come to the end of the trial and you find out the judge is going to tell you, did tell you, that these designs they're talking about still have to be a cigarette. And Mr. Fossey talked about that. They talked about heat, not burn technology, and Mr. Kelly asked all those questions to Dr. Potts. Well, this wasn't available when Mr. Maine was smoking, was it? And Dr. Potts said, no, it wasn't. That's the point. The judge's instruction requires you to consider whether the things they're saying that Reynolds or Lorillard in this case should have done, were they technologically available? You can't complain about the lack of an iPhone in the 1960s if it hadn't been invented yet. That's their case. What the documents really show about how Lorillard's products were designed are things like this. Can I have the next exhibit? They put this document into evidence, and you learned from it that Laura Large cigarettes had the lowest nicotine in the industry. Remember this one? Can I have the next one, please? They want you to think that in the 1960s, Laura Large had this uh, idea to design cigarettes to make them addictive, but then they introduced this document from 15 years after Mr. Maine's last cigarette where they're saying they don't even know what the minimum level of nicotine would be for continued smoking. They're setting it as a goal for the first time in 1980 to try to even understand that. Plaintiff put in hundreds of documents, by my count, 150 through Dr. Cummings alone, but dozens of them were from the wrong company, not Lorillard. They were from the wrong time period, like this one, years after his last Kent cigarette or they were for the wrong product. They were about Newport or some other brand that Mr. Maine never smoked. They showed you a handful of Kent ads, but you come to the end of this case, there's no claim in this case bent on Kent, based on Kent advertising. They're not even claiming that. Lorillard documents that are relevant to claims about Mr. Maine are fair game. I've never suggested otherwise, but that just hasn't been the case that they have presented to you. There was a lot of big talk about Lorillard in opening, and they didn't deliver the evidence. Here's what you learned about Kent and Mr. Maine's Kent smoking. It was not substantial in any way. First of all, none of the plaintiff's witnesses said it was substantial. You heard that it was the first brand that he used, but there's no question on the verdict form about who was first. The issue is, was it substantial? And here's what you learned about whether it was substantial. Remember this? When Dr. Prochaska was here, we went over how you could characterize Mr. Maine's Kent smoking. And in opening, uh, Mr. Kelly said that Mr. Maine experimented with Kent cigarettes. And that's actually a pretty good way of describing it because this is what Dr. Prochaska told you. Six months, never bought it. Didn't smoke it on a daily basis, only ever smoked one to three cigarettes at a time, was a light, non-addicted social smoker who only chipped, which means he smoked it sporadically. That's their case against Kent, and it's not substantial in any way. Your own common sense should tell you that. What about this idea that, well, maybe... Maybe the Kent cigarettes somehow interfered with Mr. Maine's choice. We thought they might argue that. So when Dr. Prochaska was here, I asked her about that too. Because first of all, none of their witnesses said the Kent cigarettes interfered with Mr. Maine's choices. And this is what uh, Dr. Prochaska said. First of all, she didn't come here to even tell you he was addicted at all. How can they argue to you that the Kent cigarettes were substantial and somehow impaired his future choices if he was never even addicted to them? The truth is, um, Mr. Maine's smoking of Kent was really never about 
cig the cigarettes. It was about socializing with his friends.